nature by ralph waldo emerson chapter five discipline in view of the significance of nature we arrive at once at a new fact that nature is a discipline this use of the world includes the preceding uses as parts of itself space time society labor climate food locomotion the animals the mechanical forces give us sincerest lessons day by day whose meaning is unlimited they educate both the understanding and the reason every property of matter is a school for the understanding its solidity or resistance its inertia its extension its figure its divisibility the understanding adds divides combines measures and finds nutriment and room for its activity in this worthy scene meantime reason transfers all these lessons into its own world of thought by perceiving the analogy that marries matter and mind one nature is a discipline of the understanding in intellectual truths our dealing with sensible objects is a constant exercise in the necessary lessons of difference of likeness of order of being and seeming of progressive arrangement of ascent from particular to general of combination to one end of manifold forces proportioned to the importance of the organ to be formed is the extreme care with which its tuition is provided a care pretermitted in no single case what tedious training day after day year after year never ending to form the common sense what continual reproduction of annoyances inconveniences dilemmas what rejoicing over us of little men what disputing of prices what reckonings of interest and all to form the hand of the mind to instruct us that good thoughts are no better than good dreams unless they be executed the same good office is performed by property and its filial systems of debt and credit debt grinding debt whose iron face the widow the orphan and the sons of genius fear and hate debt which consumes so much time which so cripples and disheartens a great spirit with cares that seem so base is a preceptor whose lessons cannot be forgone and is needed most by those who suffer from it most moreover property which has been well compared to snow if it fall level to-day it will be blown into drifts to-morrow is the surface action of internal machinery like the index on the face of a clock whilst now it is the gymnastics of the understanding it is hiving in the foresight of the spirit experience in profounder laws the whole character and fortune of the individual are affected by the least inequalities in the culture of the understanding for example in the perception of differences therefore is space and therefore time that man may know that things are not huddled and lumped but sundered and individual a bell and a plough have each their use and neither can do the office of the other water is good to drink coal to burn wool to wear but wool cannot be drunk nor water spun nor coal eaten the wise man shows his wisdom in separation in gradation and his scale of creatures and of merits is as wide as nature the foolish have no range in their scale but suppose every man is as every other man what is not good they call the worst and what is not hateful they call the best in like manner what good heed nature forms in us she pardons no mistakes her yea is yea and her nay nay the first steps in agriculture astronomy zoology those first steps which the farmer the hunter and the sailor take teach that nature's dice are always loaded that in her heaps and rubbish are concealed sure and useful results how calmly and genially the mind apprehends one after another the laws of physics 
what noble emotions dilate the mortal as he enters into the counsels of the creation and feels by knowledge the privilege to be his insight refines him the beauty of nature shines in his own breast man is greater that he can see this and the universe less because time and space relations vanish as laws are known here again we are impressed and even daunted by the immense universe to be explored what we know is a point to what we do not know open any recent journal of science and weigh the problems suggested concerning light heat electricity magnetism physiology geology and judge whether the interest of natural science is likely to be soon exhausted passing by many particulars of the discipline of nature we must not omit to specify too the exercise of the will or the lesson of power is taught in every event from the child's successive possession of his several senses up to the hour when he saith thy will be done he is learning the secret that he can reduce under his will not only particular events but great classes nay the whole series of events and so conform all facts to his character nature is thoroughly mediate it is made to serve it receives the dominion of man as meekly as the ass on which the saviour rode it offers all its kingdoms to man as the raw material which he may mould into what is useful man is never weary of working it up he forges the subtle and delicate air into wise and melodious words and gives them wing as angels of persuasion and command one after another his victorious thought comes up with and reduces all things until the world becomes at last only a realized will the double of the man two sensible objects conform to the premonitions of reason and reflect the conscience all things are moral and in their boundless changes have an unceasing reference to spiritual nature therefore is nature glorious with form color and motion that every globe in the remotest heaven every chemical change from the rudest crystal up to the laws of life every change of vegetation from the first principle of growth in the eye of a leaf to the tropical forest and antediluvian coal mine every animal function from the sponge up to hercules shall hint or thunder to man the laws of right and wrong and echo the ten commandments therefore is nature ever the ally of religion lends all her pomp and riches to the religious sentiment prophet and priest david isaiah jesus have drawn deeply from this source this ethical character so penetrates the bone and marrow of nature as to seem the end for which it was made whatever private purpose is answered by any member or part this is its public and universal function and is never omitted nothing in nature is exhausted in its first use when a thing has served an end to the uttermost it is wholly new for an ulterior service in god every end is converted into a new means thus the use of commodity regarded by itself is mean and squalid but it is to the mind an education in the doctrine of use namely that a thing is good only so far as it serves that a conspiring of parts and efforts to the production of an end is essential to any being the first and gross manifestation of this truth is our inevitable and hated training in values and wants in corn and meat it has already been illustrated that every natural process is a version of a moral sentence the moral law lies at the centre of nature and radiates to the circumference it is the pith and marrow of every substance every relation and every process all things with which we deal preach to us what is a farm but a mute gospel the chaff and the wheat weeds and plants blight rain insects sun it is a sacred emblem from the first furrow of spring to the last stack which the snow of winter overtakes in the fields but the sailor the shepherd the miner the merchant in their several resorts 
have each an experience precisely parallel and leading to the same conclusion because all organizations are radically alike nor can it be doubted that this moral sentiment which thus scents the air grows in the grain and impregnates the waters of the world is caught by man and sinks into his soul the moral influence of nature upon every individual is that amount of truth which it illustrates to him who can estimate this who can guess how much firmness the sea-beaten rock has taught the fisherman how much tranquillity has been reflected to man from the azure sky over whose unspotted deeps the winds forevermore drive flocks of stormy clouds and leave no wrinkle or stain how much industry and providence and affection we have caught from the pantomime of brutes what a searching preacher of self-command is the varying phenomenon of health herein is especially apprehended the unity of nature the unity in variety which meets us everywhere all the endless variety of things make an identical impression xenophanes complained in his old age that look where he would all things hastened back to unity he was weary of seeing the same entity in the tedious variety of forms the fable of proteus has a cordial truth a leaf a drop a crystal a moment of time is related to the whole and partakes of the perfection of the whole each particle is a microcosm and faithfully renders the likeness of the world not only resemblances exist in things whose analogy is obvious as when we detect the type of the human hand in the flipper of the fossil saurus but also in objects wherein there is great superficial unlikeness thus architecture is called frozen music by de stahl and goethe vitruvius thought an architect should be a musician a gothic church said coleridge is a petrified religion michael angelo maintained that to an architect a knowledge of anatomy is essential in haydn's oratorios the notes present to the imagination not only motions as of the snake the stag and the elephant but colors also as the green grass the law of harmonic sounds reappears in the harmonic colors the granite is differenced in its laws only by the more or less of heat from the river that wears it away the river as it flows resembles the air that flows over it the air resembles the light which traverses it with more subtle currents the light resembles the heat which rides with it through space each creature is only a modification of the other the likeness in them is more than the difference and their radical law is one and the same a rule of one art or a law of one organization holds true throughout nature so intimate is this unity that it is easily seen it lies under the undermost garment of nature and betrays its source in universal spirit for it pervades thought also every universal truth which we express in words implies or supposes every other truth omne verum vero consonat it is like a great circle on a sphere comprising all possible circles which however may be drawn and comprise it in like manner every such truth is the absolute end seen from one side but it has innumerable sides the central unity is still more conspicuous in actions words are finite organs of the infinite mind they cannot cover the dimensions of what is in truth they break chop and impoverish it an action is the perfection and publication of thought a right action seems to fill the eye and to be related to all nature the wise man in doing one thing does all or in the one thing he does rightly he sees the likeness of all which is done rightly words and actions are not the attributes of brute nature they introduce us to the human form of which all other organizations appear to be degradations when this appears among so many that surround it the spirit prefers it to all others it says from such as this have i drawn joy and knowledge in such as this have i found and beheld myself i will speak to it 
it can speak again it can yield me thought already formed and alive in fact the eye the mind is always accompanied by these forms male and female and these are incomparably the richest informations of the power and order that lie at the heart of things unfortunately every one of them bears the marks as of some injury is marred and superficially defective nevertheless far different from the deaf and dumb nature around them these all rest like fountain pipes on the unfathomed sea of thought and virtue whereto they alone of all organizations are the entrances it were a pleasant inquiry to follow into detail their ministry to our education but where would it stop we are associated in adolescent and adult life with some friends who like skies and waters are coextensive with our idea who answering each to a certain affection of the soul satisfy our desire on that side whom we lack power to put at such focal distance from us that we can mend or even analyze them we cannot choose but love them when much intercourse with a friend has supplied us with a standard of excellence and has increased our respect for the resources of god who thus sends a real person to outgo our ideal when he has moreover become an object of thought and whilst his character retains all its unconscious effect is converted in the mind into solid and sweet wisdom it is a sign to us that his office is closing and he is commonly withdrawn from our sight in a short time 